Well, hello, hello, my dear friends, my dear viewers, welcome back to the channel, and today I have three things to tell you. First things first, I am sorry that this video took so long as it did, but it took me a while with the script, not really the script per se, because I will not be following the script, as always, but it took me a while to get ideas in order, and also the bloody construction work is still going on, it should have ended like at least a week ago, at the very least, and it hasn't. I mean, it has been going on for this past few weeks and I started university and my schedule is all over the place so I decided, you know what, let's postpone this a bit and now Friday the 9th of October I have a free time, a free afternoon of sunny beautifulness which is not a word but I just made it because it's just so beautiful. Anyway, second thing Yes, yes, okay, you can have it, you can have your 50th student, I, I should have brought a towel prop, I'll throw a mask, I'll throw my towel at your feet and I will admit my defeat, yes, we can have a 50th student, I, I, I believe we have established that in the comment section of the last video now, haven't we? And... Third things third, I am in love with Final Fantasy XV. Yes, it, it's... And, and, and also, spoiler, it is my first Final Fantasy, so yeah, you can diss me in the... You have, you have your topic for dissing me in the comments for this video. My, it, the fact that my first Final Fantasy is Final Fantasy XV, of all the Final Fantasies available. But yes, I am enjoying it very much, but today, in this video, I might be speaking a little bit louder than normal, I don't know why, maybe it's the excitement. I'm very excited to be back for this video because this video, as I believe I've said on the last one, this video will revolve around characters, specifically the playable character and a little bit on the side characters. I will not delve too deep in the side characters because as far as I'm aware, like, in the law, there's not a lot of characters, like known characters, that we can place in this time. There's like your Dumbledore, your... the ghosts, of course, the ghosts will have to be in the game because they were already there. Peeves as well, I'm, I'm really hoping to see Peeves. And there's a lot of other characters around Dumbledore's time specifically, and a lot of characters from the canon we know, like from the era we know, are either being born or were already born around this time. But my idea is to start first with the playable character and for that I will share with you a few of my ideas as for the story progression. Now, I think that the game could begin in some, something like this. Imagine we have the headmaster of the school, or the he or the deputy headmaster, mistress, it depends, because I think normally the duty of writing the letters falls to the deputy headmaster slash mistress. As we know, Minerva McGonagall, the deputy headmistress during Harry's time and before, was the one responsible to write the letters and send the letters. Now, the discussion of headmaster or headmistress is one that I've been trying to crack, and not only me, but a lot of other people in, in YouTube have been trying to, to come up with a possibility. Now, I see a lot of people falling to the possibility that the headmaster will be Phineas Nigella's Black. Now, there is not necessarily a way to prove that, okay, so in this year, Phineas Nigellus Black was the headmaster of Hogwarts. The, because at first, we don't even know exactly when the game will be set. But going back to the late 1800s, we have from the 70s to the end of the 90s, we know that there's at least two headmasters well, one headmaster and one headmistress in that time. I believe I mentioned the headmistress in the last in the last video, Eupraxia Mole. 
at least in 1876, she was still headmistress. Because there's that whole event with bees and Rancorous Carp. Like, so at least in 1876, she's there. Now, we don't know when she retires. And we don't even know when Phineas Black begins his career as, as headmaster. The only thing we know is that he started Hogwarts in 1858 and he ended in 1865. So, from 65 to 76, nine years go by. But, no, nine years, no, 11 years go by. Jesus Christ. 11 years go by. So, there is totally the possibility that in, in those 11 years, Phineas matured to one day wield the position. But we know that in 76, Eupraxia Mo is still the headmistress. So Phineas will have to begin his career after. Now, another thing that points me away from Phineas Black is that the guy he's known to be the least popular headmaster of Hogwarts. Like, it outright says in the wiki, well, you know, veracity to be confirmed, but I trust the Harry Potter fandom wiki, so... He hated the position. So, unless, of course, the fact that Phineas Black is the headmaster will play into the overall story, and I will have something to say about that in a bit, Honestly, do you really think it's a good idea to have a guy who loads the position of headmaster being in a game that will serve to make us like live the ultimate Hogwarts fantasy? To me, I don't really think so. Sure, you can say, that, oh, but the, the potions professor seems to be a carbon copy of Snape. Yes, I know it seems so, but that's part of the fantasy. Although they could have gone with a different type of professor, I know. We know that Snape was like that, and the guy looks a bit like Snape anyway. So they, they, they could have changed him a bit. But yeah, they could have gone with a more Slughorn type character. Maybe not on the part of the favoritism, but a more jovial kind of, of professor for, for the role of Potions Master. Not necessarily the broody kind of. The guy even limps. Like, you combine the aesthetic with the limping. Like, it's like, it's like if Filch and Snape had a kid. That's the Potions Master on the Hogwarts Legacy trailer, and that's an image you all will have to live with for, for the foreseeable future, myself included. But anyway, Headmaster, Headmistress, whoever it was, I believe that the game could start with them addressing the letter to our playable character. Now, we've discussed that, well, you showered me with your opinions and I honestly I never had so much fun interacting on online with anyone because that's this is what I want comments telling me your opinions and us discussing our opinions and coming to terms with each other's opinions on the matter of course I ended up totally defeated but and I admit it but it was just a blast, and I hope that this video will have such an active comment section again. Now, back on track, because you know me, and by the way, this video will probably have half an hour at least, you know me. So, headmaster, headmistress, deputy headmaster, deputy headmistress, someone of the higher, of higher position, and I want to believe that it, it, is, it will be the headmaster or mistress, will be writing the letter to the character. Now, we know that the character, our character, will receive a late acceptance letter to Hogwarts. Now, this is why I think that the position of inviting our character to Hogwarts should fall to the headmaster or, or mistress, because it's not a normal situation. It's someone who, if, if he or she will start on its fifth year, it's someone that has been, that it's five years late to Hogwarts. In a situation with a background that calls for special circumstances. Now that's why I think that the introduction to the game could be a scene with, you know, the headmaster with a quill and, and parchment writing the letter and we hear the voiceover of the contents of the letter. Now where the headmaster may address the situation of the hidden power that 
it would mean that the character would begin the game knowing. Then again, then again, the letter may not address this. It may just be the the professor addressing it to himself. But there, I think there needs to be some knowledge, some prior knowledge from Hogwarts from the Hogwarts side that this character is special. Because if we are to go with the 50th student, there needs to be a reason as for why, well, you know, this person has been unaware all his life that he's a wizard. If, if they are going to go with that, but bleh, I keep losing myself. <laughs> so yeah, letter being written, the situation being explained, the, the dark cabal being explained as well, and we see a few images of that, and then boom, we fall to our character's home, receiving the letter and well the letter getting in to the house and someone calling the player character now this will be the typical rpg kind of like skyrim fallout you know character creation where you don't see your character per se well in fallout you kind of do see the vanilla the vanilla default uh, nora or nate i forgot the vanilla name for for the male character in, in Fallout 4. I, I usually play as a male, so I hear Nora more often, so... But yeah, something like that, where we see a vanilla version of our character, a default version of our character, and then we are offered the possibility to change our character, to create our de facto character. Now, another point that I've been thinking a lot about, uh, it's a very simple point, really, name our character name i think and i really really am adamant on this and i you can try but you will not make me change opinion on this i think our character should have a set name or at the very least a set family name and a list of names to choose from Names that would, of course, be voiced and be shown and spoken after being selected. Now, the reason I think this should be it, and I think you will agree with me, is because you can't necessarily have people running around in Hogwarts with obnoxious names, much like the ones our community is known to come up with. You know, nothing wrong against it, it's... it's your username or the name you choose to bear well i'm speaking about made up names not name not your real name i'm not calling anyone's real name obnoxious just the usernames we usually see online so and another thing this game is going to be voiced characters will be addressing our character and we know that in harry potter law there's a variety of forms of address between the characters, like Mr. or Miss last name, just the last name when it comes to Spite, you know, Draco calling Harry just Potter, the professor's calling him Mr. Potter, his friends calling him Harry, and just overall just a variety of ways that people address each other. And we can't really expect that a game will have into consideration every single little name. Even if it's real names, even if the system is able to recognize like names, I can't expect to, to boot up the game, put up my name, Andre Pereira, and just expect that someone in the game will address me as Mr. Pereira. I cannot expect that. Of course, I would never put my real name on the game, Probably my character, if I if I were to choose a name, my character, my first character would, would probably be called Hurricane Shadow, which is a character that I created a very long time ago. And it just stuck. It, it's my username on basically anything gaming related. And it's a sort of realistic name. It's not really realistic, but it is sort of realistic. But And I can't expect the game to recognize hurricane and shadow through voice like I, we cannot expect that for any sort of name so that's why i think that it's important to at least have a set family name 
And please let it not be Possa Weasley. Let us not, do not let us choose from many of those. Like, do not let us suddenly become a Weasley, a long lost Weasley cousin. Let, let's not, let's choose a name, a normal name, like Smith. Smith's a good name. I like the name Smith. Like, help, Professor McGonagall's actress is Maggie Smith, I think. No, and, and now, yeah, really, I, I am really just scraping the bottom of the barrel here, not knowing the, the freaking name of the actress. And I, I love both the actress and the, the wiki doesn't say. Oh, God. Okay, anyway, no, it doesn't matter. It, it's Maggie Smith. I am sure about it. But, um, so yeah, let, let us choose a normal name for the last name. Let it be a set name. And, I don't know, give us a list of male and female... Oh, God, there's another can of worms I should have opened. But, you know, I'm going to go with it. Let us... Give us a list of names, male and female, to choose from, and let them be interchangeable. Doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be gender said. Do not burn me at the stake. This video is coming out much worse than I thought. <laughs> but anyway. And yeah, because it just doesn't make sense, you know, to have a chosen name in a normal RPG like Skyrim or even Fallout, like where you are known by a title or people give you like nicknames or sort like in in Skyrim you're known as the Dragonborn or when you jo when you join a certain faction and achieve a certain level you are known as I don't know the harbinger of the companions the the headmaster of the of the college of winterhold and in Fallout you are the sole survivor there is a little nugget that God's word can recognize your name if it's like a set a name from a set list, but like it's a gigantic list, and he can call your name, but he's, he's really the only one. For instance, Preston Garvey calls you General, Piper calls you Blue, I think, because of the Vault suit and, and the Pip Boy. So yeah, we can't expect the the whole the game to feel like so. Just you just have a nickname and people all call you that because I mean. I'm thinking about the teachers. The teachers wouldn't go for that. The professors always call their students by their last name with a form of address before it. So, yeah, I don't know why I lost so much time with the name. Point is, set name, or at the very least, set family name. I'm actually okay if they say, your character is called this. But they won't do that. So they won't do that on account of, like, you can choose male or female. So they won't restrange both genders to a name. It's not going to be like Assassin's Creed Valhalla. <coughs> <coughs> yes, I have a lot of pent-up hang anger when it comes to Assassin's Creed. But that's not neither here nor there. So yeah. I believe that at least a family set name, a set family name should be in here. Now, we've created our character, we've received the letter, and now someone will have to arrive to guide us. I hope, at least. And the one I think will do that is the same person who we see driving the carriage on the cinematic trailer. Now, this is a very big stretch of imagination, but... I want to compare our character situation to Harry's own situation. Harry had Hagrid with him during the trip to Diagon Alley. Hagrid was the one that went to pick him up at home. Not saying that it will happen with our character, but it could happen. But, and then Hagrid went with him to Diagon Alley. They stayed there a few days. They bought, they bought Harry everything he needed. And I believe that something similar could happen with our character. And then the character will arrive at Hogwarts via the carriage with that same attendant. Possibly even the groundskeeper or the caretaker. It doesn't matter. Because we know that we'll be going to Diagon Alley and I will have none of it that one of you said in the comments that, oh, our wand might, might break 
So we might be a, we might have to go back to to Holly Vanders. No, 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 no. I refuse to go to Holly and uh, to go to Holly without going there the very first time. This is the other thing I will not relinquish is the first wand choosing. Like that's a huge part of the Harry Potter fantasy. They even replicated in the Wizarding World theme park. I never been there, but I heard they do. Like they do the whole light thing with the, the sound effect. Like the closest I've been to the Wizarding World is the Harry Potter exhibition. It was, the exhibition was here in Portugal. I believe I went there this year. No, not this year, last year in around April or something, or November. No, I went there in November. The exposition was going to stay here until April. And I'm so glad I went there back in November because, well, you, we know how COVID, we know how COVID uh, happened. So, and anyway, so we go to Diagon Alley, we go to all the Vanders, we know that it's probably Ollivander's father, but I wouldn't I would argue that it could be Ollivander's grandfather, like Garrick Ollivander's grandfather. Because I've been I've been checking this and um, again the dates are a bit iffy, like we don't have we don't have a a specific, you know, date for each of the family members of Ollivanders, but we do know that Garrick's father was called Gervais Ollivander, and he operated, well, the wiki says before 1890, so again, we can make an argument that it was either Gervais Ollivanders, which is Gary Ollivanders' father, or Gerbold Ollivanders. Although I do believe that it's most likely that it will, that it will be uh, Gervais Ollivanders' father, not only because it makes a little bit more sense in you know in the timeline, but it also it would it would be really cool that like we would be seeing things almost a generation before. Like, not necessarily because there's a lot of time separating both works, but, you know, Ollivanders live forever, and so they are old as, as all hell, and there's always an Ollivanders in, um, in Diagon Alley, so, I mean, maybe not so much. We don't know if Garrick has a, has a family or anything. We assume he has. I mean, yeah, there there is no real... I mean, he has a wife and a son, so the wiki says. So there is a an Ollivander descendant. Sadly, he had a daughter, apparently. Oh. That's... that's sad. Okay, never mind. <laughs> it says me after just contemplating the sadness of Gary Ollivander's life. I just... I don't know if the light did something, but it just got cloudy all of a sudden. But yeah. We'll go to Ollivander's, assuming Gervais Ollivander's, and we're off. I don't know if we'll be able to buy an animal. That would be really cool, but I will touch upon that later down the line. Now, we are at Hogwarts. Let's go back to the fifth year thing. There is a few possibilities, I thought, as to why our character never got to Hogwarts at 11, at 11 when, he was, when he was 11 years old. There is the possibility that either his magic did manifest, he was considered a squid, perhaps, if he came from a magical family, that is. So, assuming this has a lot of branches in my head, like if I could materialize my head on this, it would have branches all over. So, let's assume we come from a wizarding family. Like, mom and dad, mom's a witch, dad's a witch, dad's a wizard, all wizards. Like all the way out so and we have a kid us now we were probably considered squids we were we were not given an option to go to hogwarts like we have manifested magical abilities our parents just chose not to have us go to hogwarts 
for some reason, I believe it can happen. Or, well, actually, that's it. On, on the Wizarding family, that's, that's actually it. Like, we are either do not manifest magical abilities, which, mm, there's a whole obscurial thing with that, and I don't want to get into that. And, like, how can you live for, like, 16 years and not manifest abilities, effectively being a squib for your whole life, and then all of a sudden you manifest abilities? Like, sure, we'll have an ancient magic talent, and that can help manifest our normal magical talent, but... Yeah, the squib thing, I, I don't really... I'm not really buying it. Now, if we come from a wizarding family, my best option is that our family, our parents, will choose not to send us to Hogwarts. And there's a myriad of reasons for that. We know that some magical families, like not the majority, of course, but some <coughs> Malfoys, considered Hogwarts to be a bit of a lacking organization, a lacking school. And now we know that probably there are a lot more families who actually think like that. And so, maybe in that time it wasn't as easy to send a student to another school. I mean, it's never easy, I think. But Lucius Draco just says that his, his father considered sending him to Durmstrang, so apparently he could pull some sort of strings. Then again, the headmaster of Durmstrang was a dead heater as well, so, you know. Everything's fair when you have when you have a hand in, in a Dark Lord's cabal, but... But yeah, or we are born in a muggle family. And yes, I'm using the two ends of the spectrum, not missing both because then we have a lot of other possibilities. But we are born in a muggle family. And again, either we have magical abilities and for some reason we don't receive the letter. Because you see, you see, this is hard. That's why I was so adamant against the 50th student idea, because it's hard to pick up a reason as to why that student in particular spent five, well, four years of his education, or possibly lack of education, not knowing he was a wizard without any sort of consequences. And obviously, if they end up saying, oh, well, you know, it's the ancient magic predisposition, it helped him, he helped him kind of suppress it because he could sense it, and, well, his, families are, his family are muggles, and he knew he wasn't normal, and he was like, okay, I'm going to suppress myself because I have this affinity to ancient magic that I don't know I have, but I do have... You see, you see how hard it is. This is what I deal with when I'm trying to fall asleep. This game has buried itself into my mind. And this lore, I'm just trying to juggle so many bits of lore into my head that I have trouble falling asleep. Well, that and all the nightmares and stuff. But anyway, so yeah. I'm <laughs> but as I said... I am now buying the whole 50th situation. And I admit it will make for some enjoyable moments in gameplay and that's what I want to touch now. So we've arrived at Hogwarts, we've selected our house, best house, uh, best house of Hufflepuff, not Ravenclaw, bloody hell. I would not be sorted into Ravenclaw, not by a long shot. <laughs> I may be smart, but I'm lazy smart, so I would not be going into Ravenclaw. Hufflepuff for life. So yeah, I was selected into Hufflepuff. Now, fifth year student. Let's assume there's owls. We don't know if we don't know when the owls began, but let's assume there's owls. You are dropped into a school year where you know you'll be evaluated at the end, and let's assume you spent the last fifteen or so years not knowing you were a wizard, not having any sort of formal academic instruction, not even having the basics of house magic education, because we know that young wizards and witches do not learn how to cast spells in uh, before they are 11 and go to Hogwarts, but we do know that those that are taught in a magical environment 
do have some sort of knowledge of the things they might be able to do. At least I assume they do. Like you don't, you're not going to have a kid at home all day and not at least use that time to teach him something. If, even if it's just theoretically, you know, you're in the house doing household things. And like, ex let's take the Weasley's example. Like Molly Weasley is an expert in household spells. You cannot tell me that at least for Bill and Charlie and maybe Percy, maybe even Ron paid some attention. I'm discounting the twins because it's the twins. But, you know, Molly was doing things around the house and even, even Arthur would be doing things around the house. And I want to believe that they would use some opportunities to teach their kids. Oh, you know, this is a spell that does this, this and that. The incantation is this, this and that. Of course, they wouldn't be able to do it but they would be able to learn something. And the point I'm trying to cover is how do we bring a 15-year-old or 16-year-old student in up to date with four years of education? Because we may not know the entire curriculum of the four years of Hogwarts, but we have a general understanding. And so... How do you bring him up to speed with basic things like Wingardium Leviosa, Alohomora, the basic potions that you learn in years one through four, basic transfiguration spells? Like, I'm going to give the only example we know from the, the books and the movies, the transfiguration spell Veraverto, which I honestly do not see the practical use, but Transfiguration as a whole is a subject that boggles my mind a bit because I don't see any particularly useful aside from human transfiguration. Human transfiguration is really cool, and we, you know, it's the kind Geralt Grindelwald uses in the Fantastic Beast movies, and it's really, really cool. But you know, that's what I'm saying. So what I think is, we arrive at Hogwarts. Everyone knows our situation because. It's Hogwarts. Everyone knows everything in Hogwarts about everyone. Like, someone does something on the seventh floor corridor and someone in the dungeons knows about it. So, our situation will be made known because, of course, we will be the late student. We will be the one who skips hears. And I believe that in the beginning, there will be a close circle of people in our immediate house that will help us with that. Now, I'm going to dabble a bit on the Hogwarts mystery story, in which I think that we will have one character that will be with us no matter the house we choose. Now I know this is a bit finicky, and I don't really like the idea, but it's either that, or they make four separate characters, one for each of the houses, that will serve as our first friend. Because we will need, is a staple of the Harry Potter world, we will need a first friend. Harry has Ron, our character in Hogwarts Mystery has Rowan Connor, Dumbledore had uh, Hephaeus Doge, Do Doge, Doge, I think it's Doge, Hephaeus Doge. And you know, it's part of the Wizarding World fantasy to have that friend to have that those people who are there with us they even say that we might be able to recruit some friends to go with us in certain adventures so we will need to make those friends and i believe that it's that friend that will start to introduce us to things and is the one that will teach us the most like sort of basic spells the ones i would call utility spells so he is your Alohomora, because I believe we I believe in those leaked images Alohomora appeared as one of the spells, and obviously you would need Alohomora. Maybe I don't know, maybe Reparo, we, then again Reparo doesn't. Wingardium Leviosa, maybe for some situational puzzles. A basic fighting spell, like I don't know, maybe Flipendo or Stupefy, or even God forbid, Expelli Armas, but you know. So because we have to find the balance. If we're not going to learn about those spells in class, we need to learn about them some other way. And if we are to start as a 50 year student, 
I mean, we can't expect professors to drop everything to help the student who just arrived. You know, and I say, so I do buy the, the idea of starting as a 50 student, but there are, there need to be workarounds for that. So, yeah. And from then on, the story continues. I don't have a lot of ideas for the story because, honestly, I like to, to speculate about a lot, but the story... I need a bit more to start with. Like, this is not like... This is not a franchise... I mean, I'm, t I'm talking about the game, not the books. The, the game is not yet part of something bigger in terms of games. There's no precedent for games. There's no, there's no future. So this game, for all we know, could be its own self-contained story. And I believe it will be. I don't think this will be the start of a big franchise set in the Wizarding World. Because if they were to do that, in my opinion, then they should have started in the first year. And they would have to release one game per year and then one that would encompass the post school but they are not gonna do that we've established that and i doubt that they will make that anytime soon like for me and honestly this should be the definitive gaming experience for harry potter until like some other major breakthrough like in gaming technology with at this point i don't know what they can invent anymore really unless it's like fully immersive vr like you are there and you feel the impact of the spell or something that that might not work very well if someone decides decides to use the unforgivable curses but never mind uh, so yeah i do believe that this will be a one-time thing that's what i'm trying to say this will be a one-time thing just a one game in the wizarding world at least with this premise with this premise, it will be the only one. Our character, this character of ours, will only have one game. Maybe they decide to do some other game in the future with a different story, but we don't know. So, for the story, I would like to wait a bit more. Like, I could be, be here for 10 minutes and tell you, oh, you know what? So yeah, I think that at some point this dark wizard cabal would appear with wolf skulls on their heads and they will bring trouble with them. So yeah, I could be here telling you that. But I mean, I think these videos are already speculative enough and trying to work on a story without any other details of the story itself will get us nowhere. Like... With these kinds of things, with the characters, with the time period, we can sort of try to speculate on because we have loads of lore. But the story will be something original and therefore I want to wait a bit before delving into the story. Now, the next video I want to make is the spellcasting system. I have been having some ideas on the spellcasting system and I've been trying to make it not very complicated because rest assured I'm not trying to make it Order of the Phoenix tie-in game sort of complicated. Not that it's complicated, it's just janky. Because if you remember Order of the Phoenix, the tie-in game, like it was all based around the map and movements, uh, not the map, Jesus Christ, the mouse. It was all revolving around the mouse and there was movements you need to do Set of movements up and down, left and right, circle and whatnot. And it, it resulted in Harry just constantly flailing his arm around, like the time where he got his bones erased by Gilderoy Lockhart, just to try and launch the pulso, so, so to cast the pulso. So, yeah, I'm not trying to make it that. I am trying to come up with a system of. And I forgot the name. I had a cool name and everything. Con con contextual casting. That's that's the name. I'm not trying to coin it or anything or trademark it, but it just sounded cool in my head. Con contextual casting. So, yeah. Depending on the situation, a different spells would be available to activate with just the click of a button. I know it's it's downplayed. It brings memories of like 
the seventh and eighth game, which I never played because I never bought them. I have all the other games on disc for the PC, but not the seventh and the eighth, which is sad. I know the games are crap, but I would like to play them one day. And, um, and much like the older games where you would have the symbol and you would point the wand at the symbol and you would cast the specific spell, so maybe something more akin to that. I am trying, or even better, the best example I can give you so that you can think on it is the spell casting on Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire time game. That game is an absolutely piece of mess. It's a mess. That game is a mess. But the contextual casting it has, I believe, works fairly good not well it's good so but you know i'll expand on that try to come up with a list of spells go back to the leaked images and try to see what sort of those what sort of spells they're using because well that might have changed a bit but there are a few ones that we know must appear a little more like i mentioned and most likely expelliarmus expelliarmus needs to be there <laughs> we all know that so after this messy video, I do hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, please do let me know in the comment section down below. Please do comment. I, I really, I'm going to say this again, and it's genuine this time. It was on the other time. It is now. I had a blast. That video has to be my most commented video, like ever, ever since I started YouTube, and I, I started videos like two or three years ago. Like my first video dates from 2016, four years ago. It has been four years since I, since I did, since I did, since I started YouTube. And the last video I did, the Hogwarts Legacy story in Stating Speculations, has 23 comments. Like no other video had ever had so many comments. Like, and I was ecstatic. The notification just kept falling and falling and I was like, oh my god. And bear in mind, the video is doing, well, honestly, now it's probably my most viewed video. I think the, the the previous first place was a fairy tale video I had done. Yes, in that video is now. Oh no, maybe not. No, that video is now. The Hogwarts Legacy is now my most viewed video of all. I think. Oh no, wait. No, whoop. <laughs> it's not even on the fifth place. <laughs> no, okay. So my most viewed video is a book. Is a My Hero Academy review that I did on 2017. A thousand views, my god. And 15 likes. Well, that's the same. That's the same, yeah. I think I got a dislike on this video. So that, that's okay, I don't care. So, yeah, my god, my, my Hero Academia, 1,000 views. But anyway, this is not... Here's me just bumbling around like an idiot, like the idiot I am. But yeah, if you have enjoyed this video, or even if you have not, please let me know in the comment section down below. Tell me what you think about the small journey I painted for our character in the game. Do you agree with it? Would you like to see something different? And let me know. If you've enjoyed it, once again, please leave a like, a comment, and if you'd be so kind to go the extra mile, subscribe to the channel for more. I have no way of guaranteeing when the next video will come out, but I promise you, to try and take less time between this one and the last because it has been quite a while more than I would want to admit so yes I will try my best if you want to follow me on Twitter I'm trying to interact there a bit more and yeah that's it I'll see you guys next time have a fantastic weekend and bye bye My god, this video probably has 40 minutes or something. God damn it.